Okay, let's let's finish up Strawberry Catcher. This is part three. So far, here's what we have. We have a, a basket that you can move left and right by kind of clicking around it, and strawberries that are falling from the sky. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of collision detecting now. All right, so let's, let's, let's try to catch them, okay? So again, uh, as you probably figured out from the last video, I've never done this app before. So I'm gonna try my first instinct. Here's my first instinct. As the strawberries are falling, when they get to a certain position, I need to check if they have been caught, right? So here's what I need to do. I need to, uh, here's where the strawberries are falling. If the strawberry's Y position is low enough, it's time to check to see if it got caught. Does that make sense? So let's, inside this for loop, what we need to do is check to see if it's time to be caught. So what would it mean for the strawberry to be caught? So here, here's what I want to say. This is my first instinct. Let's see if we can make this work. If, um, if is caught for this strawberry, well, actually, you know what I, I need to do? If it's low enough. So if the strawberry is low enough, so what I need to do is get, get, the, get the Y position of the strawberry. Get the Y position of strawberries at I. Now if it's low enough, now I guess I'm going to have to do some guess and check here. So what looks like it's low enough? Uh, like right here maybe, I don't know, 100 or 380? How about that? That's like the lowest, that's like where you have to go. So if so about 380. So if it's greater than or equal to 380, just in case, I'll just say greater than or equal to. Then it's time to check if it's caught. Otherwise, we don't care. So if it, then it's time to check if it's caught. So let's see if if it is caught. Strawberries at I. I'm going to use this as a parameter. If it gets caught, then I want to add this, some points variable that I haven't defined yet. Points plus plus. Let's go ahead and define that points variable up here. Var points begin at zero, right? So points plus plus. Otherwise, it's game over, isn't it? By the way, I haven't made is caught yet. I have to make is caught. Um, so else, it's game over. Okay, so let's go ahead and say, let's set screen. Well, we actually want to end the game loop too. So let's say game loop equals null. That means I'm going to nullify the game loop. I actually made a whole video about ending time loops and restarting them. So we can, um, we can stop the game loop. It'll no longer run. Um, actually, you know what I need to do is I need to, sorry, it's not game loop equals null. It's stop time loop. Stop time loop, game loop. And then I'll say game loop is null. Okay, so I need both of these lines. And then I also need to set the, set the screen to game over screen. There you go. Uh, I might want a game over function that does all this. I'm actually going to make a game over function. So I actually going to produce a lot of work for myself. Because the game over, I also need to calculate the score and set the score text box. So maybe I should put that into function. So hopefully this makes sense. So for all the strawberries, I'm going to make them fall. If it's time to see if they're caught, which is like at 380, if it's caught, I get a point. Otherwise, I stop the time loop and it's game over time. Okay? So I can kind of read this all in. I don't want my function to get too long and load it up with too much logic. Okay, so what should I make first? Is caught probably, right? So let's make this function called is caught. I'll make it right here. Function is caught. I might end up, and it takes a parameter, uh, strawberry. All right, so what would it mean for it to be caught? By the way, I need this to return true or false, right? Remember, because if statements take true or false as a parameter here. So I need somehow this to return as true or false, right? 
All right, so here's what's going to go on. If the x position of the strawberry is within a certain bound, right? So I need to get the basket x, I need to get the basket y. So let's do this, var basket x, var basket y. Ah, man, hmm. Now that I, I feel like I've defined these too many times. I feel like these should be global. Do you notice how I'm doing this? Didn't I also do this in the, in the basket moving? Where's the basket move? Here it is. I have basket left edge and basket right edge. Hmm, that's all right. Whatever. I'm just I'm I'm I'll worry about making this. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna do it like this for now, but I really shouldn't make multiple variables for this. But this is what you get when you do it on the fly, right? I'm gonna I could come back and clean this up so I have fewer variables and and make it more readable. Maybe we'll have like video number four that does that uh, to clean up the code and make it more readable. Basket left edge is the get x position of the basket. Basket right edge is the get x position of the basket plus its width. Plus the get property. I have to, this is how I get its width. The basket's width. Okay, a lot going on. So you can see why I want variables for these, right? All right, so what is close enough? All right, so what I want to do is see if the strawberry is close enough. Now, i, I got to visualize this. I'm going to go to the game screen. I wonder, I'm just going to add a temporary image. I'm going to take this off. I want to add a temporary image just to visualize what's close enough to be caught. 50 by 50, and I'm just gonna look at this strawberry. I'm using this just for visualization purposes. So here it is. So maybe that should be caught. Like that's the furthest left I'd ever want it to get. Like the middle of the strawberry has to be on the right side of the left edge or on the left side of the right edge, right? So like right here, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that if the point of the strawberry is right on the left edge of the basket or on the right edge of the basket or in between, that's what it's caught. But if it's even a little bit outside, you missed it, okay? So let's call it like that. So I'm, I'm gonna delete this now that I, I've just used that for purpose, for visualization purposes. I'll leave it here just, just for, for now. Okay, how about this? All right, so if, so I need, now I need the strawberries I do, all I care about is the middle of the strawberry. The middle of the strawberry, I would say, is the strawberry position. The strawberry position, I'm gonna call it the middle of the strawberry, which is gonna be the get x position of the strawberry. Strawberry is the parameter that I passed in, right? If, the, if this, plus half its width, plus get property. Actually, I already know its width, don't I? It's 50, so plus 25. 25 is half of its width, right? So it's wherever the left edge of the picture is, plus 25, that's gonna be right down the middle of the strawberry, okay? So what I wanna do is say, I wanna return whether or not that number falls between the left edge of the basket and the right edge of the basket. So here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say return not retron, return the strawberry position, straw pause, has to be greater than or equal to the basket's left edge, and also the straw position has to be less than or equal to the basket's right edge. Now think about this. This will either come back true or false, right? It has to meet both of these conditions in order for, to be true. And if it does, that means it's between the left edge and the right edge. This will be true and it will come back true. So that means this will say true and I'll get a point. If it's not, if it's outside the bounds, right? If it's you know too far off to the left or it's too far off to the right, this whole statement here evaluates to false. Therefore, I don't get a point, I actually go to the game over. Does that make sense? Okay. So actually, not only do I want to add a point to the strawberry, I want to remove this strawberry from the array so that it disappears. Does that make sense? 
So let's go ahead and do this. Let's say this is how you get a strawberry out of the, the array. Okay, we're going to add a point. So and then uh, the strawberries array needs to get rid of this element. So strawberries, not splice. Okay, now the splice is how you remove. You may have learned about this in App Lab, uh, in code.org's modules. You need to talk about what index would you like to begin deleting item, items from strawberries. Well, I would like to begin deleting at whatever i is at the time. And then it'll ask you, how many do you want to delete? And of course, I only want to delete one. So this is how we delete one strawberry beginning at the index i. Right? So I should see the strawberries disappear. But before I test this, mm, I should make the game over function. Let's make the game over function real quick. And then I think we're ready to... Uh, we're almost done, actually. So let's make function game over. So what does the game over function look like? I set the screen. Actually, I'll, I, actually that's going to be the last thing I do. First, I want to update the text. I want to set text of the of the score game over text score label score label. Set the text of the score label to score and then whatever the score is. Is there anything else I wanted to do? I guess I didn't even need a function for that. Whatever. Maybe I'll come back in video four and, and make it look nicer. And then I want to set, okay, and then the play again button doesn't really work. The play again button really should do the same thing as the play button. All right? Let's, do, let's see if this works and then we'll worry about the play again button. What's, what is this worried about? Score hasn't been defined yet. Points. I called it points. Um, all right, let's see, let's see what happens here. Oh, I, oh, 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 I forgot to get rid of that test strawberry. I don't want you. Let's try now. Oh, okay. This is actually working, believe it or not. I just need to, I've deleted the element from the, um, from the array of strawberries, but I didn't delete the image from the screen. Okay, so we're actually almost there. So you might be wondering, wait a minute, that didn't work. It, it actually did, because you notice that strawberry stopped falling because it was spliced out of the array. But the thing is, when you splice the strawberry out of the array, all you're doing is removing its ID from the list. But what we need to do is delete that element from the screen. So what we should do is, right here, right after we add a point, let's delete element strawberries at I. That, that will make the image disappear now, right? So not only will its name be erased from the names list, its image will be deleted from the screen. Okay, so I can, I can go over here and catch this strawberry. Ooh, that one's gonna be hard. Oh, I, see, I was not, apparently I did not catch that one. We might, we can adjust the collision if we don't like it. That caught, caught that one, caught that one. Cut that one. I don't like, I think 380 is too low, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe. Got low battery going on. And we have game over. Very nice. Okay, here, give me 10 seconds. I'm going to go plug my computer in. Okay, skip ahead if you have to. I'm going to go plug my computer in so it doesn't die on me. I'm here, can you hear the chords? Okay, I'm back, I'm back. Got my computer all plugged in now. Now we can finish our app. Okay, play again. Play again is going to be super easy. Okay, so remember what the game over function ended the game loop. So what we should probably do, actually, there's, there's more that we need to do. There's more that we need to do. What we really should do when it's game over is do more than this. What we should do is probably empty out that strawberries array. You know what I should do? All of this should be in game over. The stop time loop and the game loop equals null should be should be in game over. 
I like that more. So game over does a lot of things. It stops the game loop. It, game loop is null now, which means the, that we can, we'll be able to reset it. We set the text, we empty out the strawberries array, becomes a new, strawberries gets it to be an empty array again. What I should do is set, I don't know, just for fun, num gets back, set back to zero. Okay, so what does play again button do? Let's make an on event function for the play again button. Let's finish this thing here. On event, on event that the play again button, is it in here? Okay, thanks guys. Golly. Sometimes that, that on the, uh, the autocomplete there gets in my way. There we go, play again button. Gets clicked. Okay, here's what I have to do. I have to kick off the timed loop again. So I'll set the screen. I'll set the screen to, ooh, 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 ooh. I actually have to delete all the strawberries off the screen that were there before, don't I? Okay, or else there's gonna be strawberries sitting in the middle of the screen. I'll, I'll worry about that in a second. I'm gonna set the screen back to the game screen. And I'd like to set the game, the game loop to be the same. Ugh, ugh. Yeah, this is okay. This is interesting. I don't want to like copy all this logic so it's like twice. I'm gonna do a little bit of an optimization here. Well, mm, mm. okay. So do you see when I when I click the the play now button? Where is that? Where's the play now button? Where's my play now button? Right here. What I'd like to do is actually call, I'm gonna grab this so I don't have to copy and paste it to the other function. I'm gonna actually give this whole thing a function, right? Called start game, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that right now, okay? So on event play now button gets clicked, I'm gonna start game. I'm also gonna do that for the play again button. Does that make sense? So I'm going to copy all this stuff that was inside the play now button, all of it, except for the, make sure you leave the curly brackets and stuff at the end. I'm going to copy it, and I'm actually going to copy it into a new function called start game. Okay, and I'll paste it in here. So that way I can just call it right here. Okay, so I called the start game function in play now, and now I can call start game in in the play again function. That's going to be easy. Do you see how that how nice that is? So now both those buttons act the same way. Start game just sets the screen to the game screen, kicks off the game loop, and so on and so on. Okay, so now there's only one game loop. I don't want to have another time loop. Okay, so if I need to delete I need to delete all of the strawberries off the screen when it's game over. So what I should probably do is make a for loop that goes through and deletes all of the strawberries off the screen, right? Or else they're going to be sitting there from the last game. Let me show you. All right, so if I, if I play a little bit and then I try to play again, do you see these ones are going to be sitting here? All right, there's a couple other things I need to do for game over. So I need to stop the timed loop. I actually, you know what I need to do is I need to set the direction back to none. There's a lot of things I need to do, actually. None. I need to, so, and I actually need to go ahead and delete all of the strawberries. So I need a for loop. Don't I? For var i zero, i is less than strawberries dot length, i plus plus. I would like to remove, and make sure you do this before you have, you, before you set the, uh, the strawberries to, to nothing. Do this for loop before that, or else it's not going to delete the strawberries. I need to delete element strawberries at i. So that way those won't carry over into the next game. Let's see what happens now. Okay, will this work? Yep. We have, we've gotten some points. Score is five. Did I ever set the score back to zero? I don't think I set the score back to zero. I should probably do that, but let's see if this works. Yeah, so then now it's back to being the game again.
but I think the problem is it'll add on to my score. Yeah, I can't, I shouldn't do that. So I also need to do in here somewhere, num is zero and points are zero. All right, there you go. So there's the strawberries falling, I'm catching them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I'll stop there. Eight. If I play again, I shouldn't get the points from that last game. I won't, no, I won't, but I just want to make sure. One. Okay, this is working. It's functional. Okay, so let's actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one more video. Maybe not today. I do have to go home here in a second. I'm going to do a video about how to make the game more interesting, like maybe the strawberries speed up. Um, maybe there are things you have to avoid on the screen, or maybe there's you know something you can do, like make your basket bigger temporarily if you... We'll try to add some bonus features to this. And also clean up the code, okay? So pretty good game, but it's going to get boring really fast unless we add some functionality to it. Um, I don't like all of this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the code. There are some things about this code, the way I wrote it, that I know I can and I can save some, some time, I can save some variables. So video four will be a little bit about code cleanup and trying to condense some of the variables. Um, but overall, it is functional, and I'll try to clean it up in the next video. I hope this was helpful for you guys, and you get to see some of my problem-solving uh, strategies on display when I don't have code written already, and I kind of have to figure it out as I go. So there's Strawberry Catcher. I hope it was informative and fun. I'll see you in video four if you want to clean up the code and continue on with me in video five if you want to make this game more intense. All right, you guys, happy coding. Hope you're doing well.